An international team of astronomers says it has discovered what appear to be planets that are not orbiting stars. Some scientists have suggested the existence of such free-floating planets in space. The team, which includes researchers from Japan's Nagoya and Osaka University, says it has discovered 10 such suspected floating planets. The planets each have a mass approximately equivalent to that of Jupiter. The discoveries were made over 18 months, starting in April of 2006, using a special telescope at an observatory in New Zealand. The researchers say the discovered celestial bodies must be floating planets because, unlike fixed stars, they do not emit light. They say they found no fixed stars near these planets. The discoveries are a step toward learning how planets were created and how they develop. Some scientists expect that a NASA surveyor to be launched in 2020 will be able to capture images of these floating planets. Imagine a planet floating freely through the universe, not orbiting any star. Well, astronomers think they may have found one, and it's only 100 light years from Earth. That makes it easier for researchers to test new techniques for examining the environments of alien worlds. It's possible this could be a small failed star, a so-called brown dwarf. Or it could be a true planet that formed around a star, but was kicked out in a slam dance of gravitational dynamics. Whatever it is, there could be many more of them. Several new studies point to a model of the universe in which rogue planets outnumber main sequence stars by more than two to one. Hello everyone, you're watching Radio RWJ. And today I have some news for you about the rogue planet, Planet X. And this has sort of been confirmed by NASA. First they said there's no such planet like that. But now they've observed a planet like Nibiru. They say it's unlikely to destroy Earth, but they're, they're giving us little clues. Now, I'm not sure if this planet will, this planet is or may not, you know, attack Earth or be, you know, anything bad for Earth. I'm not sure about that, but NASA has been confirmed, NASA has confirmed that it exists. Um, it, first they said there's no such object in our solar system, but now they're starting to give us an idea that it may be there. And this... I mean, this may cause a disruption in Earth, and no one's really sure right now what's going on. I mean, there's a mine conspiracy, there's a zombie attack that's going on, and earthquakes, level of earthquakes this year have been phenomenal. If you want to read over, I'll read it for you. The ancient Mayan calendar comes to an end on December 21st this year. I mean, Mayans, yes, intelligent people, but I don't, I don't think that's the main reason why the world will end, just because their calendar ends. But 2012 has been a really, really crazy year. We've seen, we've seen earthquakes magnitude 9.0, maybe above. I and if you have the earthquake app, you can get that for Windows and and even iOS. Um, you can see uh, the amount of uh, six and five point uh, six earthquakes. Um, on the Richter scale that are happening these days, it's every single day you have one or another six or five point six earthquake and the amount of stuff that's happened. And there's an asteroid DA14 that's gonna come really close to our solar. That's gonna come really close to Earth, and the scientists are saying it's not gonna impact. But no one knows. No one knows yet what's gonna happen. I guess we just have to wait December 21st, 2012, because right now, um, not much, I mean, lots has happened. You can't say nothing has happened this year. I mean, this is sudden, this is a really big global change. You can't say what is happening this year is a normal change. This is a global catastrophe. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like one of those really weird people saying, oh, the world's going to end and, and stuff like that, but, well, the facts are there, so... I'm just giving it to the people, showing them, you know, what's happening in today's world. So, yeah, so this has been a little, a little video about telling you about that NASA has confirmed planet like Nibiru uh, or Planet X, whichever you may. First, they said it didn't exist. Now they're saying it exists, but they're saying it will not harm 
planet Earth. But let's let's just see what happens. I know it seems like a really weird thing to sit and have to sit and die, but not do anything. I'm not gonna tell anyone to prepare. If you want to prepare, you could. I'm not stopping you from preparing. I'm not telling you to prepare. I thank you. We want to present to you some rather compelling evidence that would substantiate the belief that the Earth is now in the midst of an erratic wobble which in turn is contributing to the extreme earth and climate changes that are having such a profound effect upon our planet at this time. We often get numerous comments from viewers and occasionally from our subscribers that earth and climate changes are just part of the natural process of a world that is continuously changing. And this has been true in some respects throughout our existence. But what we are now experiencing across the globe in the way of extreme weather events and also catastrophic earth changes, they go beyond the scope of natural occurrences. They are becoming unprecedented in nature. In one of our recent videos, we presented an article from National Geo Geographic, which indicates that scientists now believe that climate change is causing the poles to shift at an accelerated rate. But if you really take the time to analyze the data and study the facts, wouldn't it make more sense to conclude that it is actually the shifting poles that are causing the sudden change in the world's climate? You might ask, how is that so? And so we, we would ask to you, go back and look at the history of the world. There has, in fact, been a number of pole shifts throughout the existence of this planet. And just because the world is now inhabited by humans who are living in a modern technological age, well, this doesn't mean that a major pole shift is outside the realm of possibility in our lifetimes. It is, however, conceivable that we are now in the initial stage of the pole shift that Edgar Cayce envisioned and that which Albert Einstein had acknowledged would occur. So we can speculate as to why we are witnessing these sudden changes on our planet and what might be causing these changes, but the facts do speak for themselves as to exactly what is happening at this time. Some of you keep insisting that we show irrefutable evidence that the Earth is being turned upside down and that a rogue planet in our solar system is responsible for the Earth shifting on its axis, which is a belief now held by the Inuit elders who have observed the skies and the sun for a generation. Then there are others of you who claim that we have been saying for the last 15 years that Planet X would be coming. Well, all we can tell you is that we have been waiting for 3,600 years for its return. A planet which is five times the size of Earth that moves in a retrograde orbit. This isn't going to be the type of planet that travels at a rapid pace across our solar system. Then again, if the planet were visible to the naked eye, would you then believe we will tell you this, that the world is beginning to see a period of great tribulation, and the arrival of Planet X may come much sooner than any of us would have imagined. Now, we are not trying to be fear-mongers or alarmists. There are already too many of them out there. We are just trying to present common sense evidence to the public. So here are some of the things we know for sure. Earth changes are increasing dramatically worldwide. In fact, since 2012, earthquake and volcanic activity has risen on a phenomenal level. Volcanoes are approaching 40 eruptions per day. That's right. Hard to believe, but true. Earthquakes in the ring of fire are more frequent and are occurring in unusual areas where people are not accustomed to them. 
So first off, let's examine the details of the unprecedented earthquakes happening in 2016. The earthquake activity along the Pacific Ring of Fire has been nothing short of unprecedented. From coast to coast, there have been a surge of activity that earthquake researchers are taking note of at this time. In February, or on February the 16th of uh, 2016, a report from a stuff.co.nz reported a 6.0 magnitude earthquake which was felt as far south as Dunedin. Now, coincidentally, this earthquake was shown as a magnitude 5.9 on the EMSC website, which would be different from what was shown on the GeoNet site. There have been a number of recent earthquakes taking place in New Zealand that range in magnitude of 4.3 down to 3.6 and then of course the 6.0 that was just recently recorded. But of all the earthquakes 3.0 or greater uh, that were shallow in death, this is a spike in activity that is more dangerous because the tremors are happening near the surface. The earthquake activity that has been recorded on the RSOE website is from the uh, last two days alone, which is also very alarming. With the Alpine Fault overdue for a major quake and the amount of activity taking place at, at the moment, we feel it is wise for New Zealanders to be ready. We should also note that California is continuing to experience tremors with some rare earthquakes recently, along with several smaller earthquakes all taking place within the last few days. Now, moving down to South America, there has been a spike in earthquake activity in the past 24 hours, measuring in the magnitude of 4.8 down to 3.6. Now, this is a signal for pressure building up along these plates and that pressure has to release at some point in time. If you take a look at this chart, uh, you will see that fireball events were recorded as in the hundreds per year in the year 2005. By 2011, there have been over 1,500 reports of fireballs. And since that time, it has dramatically increased to where in the year 2015, there were over 9,000 reports of fireballs. Now, it's interesting to note that the frequency of fireballs has increased by 120% between the years 2013 and 2014, and has risen another 20% between the years 2014 and 2015. Now, this is a significant increase, and it should be generating a lot of attention, but if it is, then it's being done very quietly behind closed doors. Now, looking at NASA's data month by month, we see that the fireball frequency is most concentrated in the months of August to December. However, the numbers for June and July are also increasing significantly, suggesting that the area of space from which asteroid and comet debris is reaching Earth, and consequently into which the solar system is moving, is increasing in size. NASA has also published data for near-Earth asteroids, or NEAs, uh, discoveries uh, since 1995. Their data shows a consistent increase in asteroid numbers from 1998 through the year 2013, 
and significant increases for 2014 and 2015, which shadows the uh, big increases in fireballs that were observed over those two years. Now this chart shows uh, NASA's identification of fireballs since October of 2013. Note that the vast majority of fireballs are classified as sporadics. In other words, they are not identified with any known meteor shower. Now they may occur during the same time period as a named meteor shower, but they travel in different directions and occur in different parts of the sky. So what's happening in our solar system? It appears that one of a couple of things is happening. The solar system is moving into an area of space where it is encountering a higher density of rocks and asteroids along with the debris trails of some comets. Or something such as Nemesis is approaching the inner solar system and perturbing comets and asteroids from the Kuiper Belt and or the Oort Cloud. Now the two scenarios are not exclusive, but the first scenario could also be triggered by the second. The Nemesis hypothesis proposes that the Sun has a companion star, a brown or red dwarf, in a highly elliptical orbit that periodically disturbs comets and asteroids in the Oort cloud, causing a large increase in the number of comets visiting the inner solar system and a consequential increase in impact events on Earth. Now, we're being told that the Nemesis twin sun has yet to be detected by NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer Telescope. But WISE has discovered several brown dwarfs in neighboring star systems. So, what exactly is happening in 2016? Well, as you will see by this chart, the fireballs continue to significantly increase. The weather keeps getting more and more extreme, with records being broken every day. Here's a shocking example for you. In the year 2015, this was the first year in records going back to the year 1875 that we have seen more confirmed tornado-related deaths in December than in the rest of the year combined. We now not only have land hurricanes, but we have winter blizzard cyclones and river flooding at the same time. We're seeing snow in areas where it has never snowed before. Vietnam, Laos, Taiwan, southern China, Okinawa, and the Caribbean. These are subtropical and tropical countries where they shouldn't have snow. Some of these places have received up to seven or eight inches of snow. For instance, in Vietnam, south of Hanoi, they received 7.87 inches of snow. This is the first snow ever in this area. Temperatures dropped into the mid-20s Fahrenheit in December, when normally it is supposed to be in the mid-70s. Meanwhile, in the Arctic, temperatures were 50 degrees above the average. Now, this has never happened before where you have snow and 50 degrees below normal in the tropics and then 50 degrees above normal in the Arctic. 
This is unprecedented. In December through January in England, where only a few flowering plants may be in bloom due to milder winters, there was this past winter more than 600 species in bloom, 612 to be exact. Never before in history has this happened. In addition, rains and flooding are at unprecedented levels across the globe. So one can argue that there is certainly evidence of the Planet X effect upon the entire Earth, causing it to wobble, which in turn causes seismic and volcanic activity, as well as extreme weather. The Planet X effect is setting the Earth up for a coming pole shift. The world's elite know this is coming. This is why they have prepared underground shelters and seed vaults in key parts of the world. This screen capture explains this relative to where the new equator is expected to be. The hypothesis of a major pole shift is the belief that during the shift, the North Pole and the Arctic Circle will be pushed considerably to the south, thus causing the Southern Hemisphere and Antarctica to be pushed further north above the line of the equator. Now we can see this playing out relative to this image in which the Arctic Circle has been pushed into the region which is now South America, whereby the equator is no longer a straight line dividing the northern and southern hemispheres, but rather an erratic line that has been pushed much further to the north where it is now situated in the heart of North America before dipping down to reach the southern tip of Australia. At the same time, Antarctica and the South Pole has been pushed up to where it is now situated in the region of China and Russia. So this is an interesting scenario and one worth considering when preparing for safe locations around the world. We are now in the preliminary stages of Earth's axis shift. The evidence of this can be seen in this photo taken after the earthquake in which Kyushu Island in southern Japan was devastated. The drone footage you are about to see is absolutely astonishing. While watching this, it is difficult to believe the extent of the devastation that has taken place on Japan's southern island. In late April, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake was quickly followed by a magnitude 7.3 earthquake just 28 hours later. Those earthquakes made headlines all over the globe. But why was there such tremendous damage? Well, it turns out that those two major quakes worked in conjunction with more than 600 smaller quakes to cause historic devastation all across Kyusha. As you are about to see, giant fissures have opened up in the ground right along a fault line that runs directly across Japan's southern island. And this has a lot of people extremely alarmed. Once a major disaster falls out of the news, the rest of the world tends to forget about it. But for those on Kyusha, this crisis is far from over. Authorities are still scrambling to rescue those that have been stranded by the recent earthquakes. And at this point, it is a race against time.
What is to happen during the coming polar shift could be best explained in a profound interview with Stuart Best, who is a documentary video producer, author, and publisher. As you listen to this 13-minute interview, you will be overwhelmed by his expertise regarding the coming pole shift, accompanied by a series of megaquakes and the days of darkness brought on by the arrival of Planet X. Um, we have the North Pole and the South Pole. Mm -hmm. And we've always known it that way, North Pole's North, South Pole's South. And so it is, but it may not have been that way forever, and there is significant scientific evidence, perhaps even conclusive, that there have been prior polar shifts. In other words, where north goes south and south goes north, right? That's right. Now, absolutely. Now, how many times in our Earth's history do we think this has occurred? Well, it depends on the experts you, you look at, but... From what we can gather, probably seven to eight times. They're just, I think, par partially they're guessing because of records. But it has happened a considerable number of times. From a biblical perspective, uh, there is at least probably two. I believe there was one before the creation of Adam and Eve mm -hmm. that you'll find in, in Genesis. And then it appears as though uh, when the time of Noah's flood came, that that also may have incorporated at least a partial polar shift, if not a total one. And uh, then a very interesting event occurred in the days of Peleg, which occurred maybe 250 to 300 years after the flood, in which it says the earth was divided, and that would have been a gigantic earthquake, which, uh, according to the ancient records, set up the nations as we know them today. The continents? Did it actually change continental formations i mean all right well let's get down to it what do we think occurs oh god so many questions first of all how quick would a polar reversal occur well the actual polar reversal from what we can gain from the scriptures and from other documents ancient documents it occurs very rapidly usually within a one day period so it, it occurs, uh, when it finally goes, a it one goes day extremely period. rapidly. A one-day period? Yes. And in one day, the North Pole goes to roughly the South Pole or some new location, and South goes to North? Yes. Okay, if that were to occur, what is our best guess about what would happen? Total destruction. Basically, it would depend on where you were on the Earth's surface at the time the shift occurred, the direction of the shift. Let's say, I, let's say I'm in Nevada. Uh, I would think from the prophecies you'd be in a lot of trouble. Well, what, what, what do you I mean? I think everybody in the United States of America is going to be in a lot of trouble. Because the shift... Define trouble. Uh, destruction. You mean dead? Death, yes. Yes. Well, uh, what would kill us? Well, let me just quote you from Isaiah, for example. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, yep. and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Okay, translate that into what that might mean scientifically. Well, scientifically, that would mean that in a very short period of time, the North Pole becomes the South Pole right. and actually probably goes beyond it. Sure. Because... Uh, but no, but I mean effects. When that happened, what... Total destruction. By what means? By means of, uh, well, shall we say, outside, almost outer space, coal coming down to the surface. Oh. The scriptures indicate a tremendous roll cloud develops. If you've seen uh, major squall lines, you've seen these roll clouds. Oh, listen, brother, I used to I used to chase them. All right. I, ch I well, chased them at, uh, looking for tornadoes. So yes, I'm extremely familiar with a roll cloud. Okay, now multiply that roll cloud by a tremendous margin, because what happens is the surface of the Earth changes directions rapidly, but the atmosphere above it does not. Wait a minute, the surface of the Earth changes directions right in a shift 
the, the Earth is tilted at approximately 22.5, 23.5 degrees. Right. All right. Now, when a shift occurs, right. that tilt, the, the Earth, the North Pole, starts to slide to the south. Now, as it slides to the south, it it is fairly solid, so the crustal the part of the Earth just simply slides. But the Earth, or the atmosphere, does not catch up with it. It doesn't just move with oh, it. Oh, my God. You know, I once had somebody on here talking about polar shift, and he said there would be 800-mile-per-hour winds. Oh, I would think probably at least that, probably even more. And so if I just heard you correctly, you're saying the Earth's surface would move, but the atmosphere wouldn't. The net effect, though would be atmosphere moving by us or us actually by, uh, it wouldn't make any difference the net effect would be stupendous winds yes yes in fact it would the atmosphere would actually begin to roll back as the surface of the earth accelerates in the shift My. because the atmosphere cannot keep up with it it begins to roll back and it creates a huge vacuum area for the first time i understand this and then air from the outer space comes down because it's super cold, and you have instant freeze of anything that happened to be there that would... I take it you mean actually upper atmosphere, yes. uh, the very thinner, very cold upper atmosphere. Yes. Anybody who's ever been at an, uh, in an airplane, uh, one of the recent 747s, when you look at the outside temperature and you're only at like 40,000 feet, the outside temperature is like minus... 80 minus 90 degrees yeah, it gets pretty chilly up there that, just that far up so uh further up in the atmosphere of course it's um <laughs> if that were to suddenly come down well you have instant freeze which probably explains the uh, uh findings in siberia and whatnot you mean the uh the vegetation and the woolly mammoths yes I, yes uh, uh, instant freeze they were quick frozen in a split second. The only thing that would do that is super cold air uh, approaching, you know, because of wind chill factors. And it would have to be very fast. Oh, instantaneous. They would never know what hit them. Nobody would know what hit them. Huh. There will be warning signs. Like what? Well, we're already getting the warning signs. We're seeing changes in, in the weather patterns. Uh, the patterns are getting more and more violent. Uh, Boy, I'll tell you, there's no question about that. I think we are we're in the preliminary stages of a polar shift. Of a polar shift. Now, you know, let me tell you a little story. This is a true story. I could read it because I've got it here somewhere, but I know it by heart. The Fujita scale of tornadoes actually goes to 12, but that's just an academic study. Mm -hmm. um, on Earth, in our atmosphere, it is impossible to have any, the scientists say anyway, meteorologists, impossible to have anything greater than what's called an F5 tornado at 318 miles per hour. Now, that's exactly what we had, was 318 miles per hour. That is the top, the very tip top of the F5 scale. At 319, which, by the way, they think they might have actually had, you would have an F6. And they say that's impossible. And yet, it occurred, and everybody who's been watching the weather maps knows the horrendous, horrendous uh, tornado season that we've, we've had. And you're saying this is a harbinger. Yes, absolutely. In fact, it's going to increase tremendously. Then there's one more thing, and I've been dealing with this on my show now for two years. So I'll tell you about it. You can tell me if it means anything, Stuart, but... From time to time, I will suddenly start getting all these emails and faxes, and people will start saying to me, Hey, Art, guess what? My compass is suddenly deviating anywhere between 8 to 15 degrees west. And it's freaky. It's like the pole is wandering a little bit, and then it comes back. Mm -hmm. Well, a magnetic pole shift probably will precede the actual literal pole shift. When the magnetic pole shift and go into, I guess, what you could call them a dipolar reversal, there is a period of time in which the magnetic field actually collapses, according to the scientists that have studied this. In other words, goes to zero. Goes to zero. 
during that time, of course, you have uh, all the lethal rays from the sun, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Your uh, and nothing, mass ejections and all that. Nothing, are to, nothing to protect you from them, right? That's right, because it's the magnetic field that actually does most of the protecting. Which is one of the reasons why your satellites and or manned uh, satellites are below the Van Allen belt because they're protected by the Van Allen belt itself from the more lethal rays of the sun. So if suddenly it went to zero, in essence, we would be immediately, particularly if it's a bad uh, solar cycle time, which, by the way, we happen to be coming up on. Yes. A solar maximum, they say, perhaps within the next year. Uh, you would then be wide open to a coronal mass ejection that could flip the poles? Yes. Well, I don't know if it would actually literally create the polar shift, but it could certainly rearrange the magnetic poles uh, tremendously. And there are some uh, scientists that have done some research on this, and they claim that when the poles go to zero, mm -hmm. that it has tremendous effects upon the Earth, great shaking of the earth and then it reorientates itself and, and the, the north pole becomes the south pole etc cetera, etc cetera. Stuart, i have a fellow i interview from time to time named major ed dames from SciTech, which is a remote viewing organization he has remote viewed uh something that he calls a kill shot from the sun and it sounds an awful lot like what you're talking about could well be. There's no question that the sun is involved in this because the time of the polar shift, according to the scriptures, and the time of a sola nova are the same. Uh, the Bible indicates in the Old Testament that the moon will give off the light of the sun, and the sun will give off seven times the light it has now. Now, that can only be described as a mini nova. You know, it's interesting you should mention this because I've been reading these stories just in the last few days about scientists seeing these suns go into this apparent nova condition a lot lately. I mean, they've got all kinds of new information about it, and if other suns can do it, I mean, we, our sun is not that unusual. That's right. It could do it too, couldn't it? It not only could, according to the prophecies, it will. And uh, actually, uh, the way the Lord worded it, he said the, the heavens will be shaken, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. In other words, things sort of go off from their normal course. The book of Enoch says the moon shall change its laws and not be seen for its proper period. Would anybody on earth live through such an event? Yes, there are survivors. According to the scriptures, there are survivors. Well, not many. How about are. scientifically? I, I, I don't uh, in any way put down the scriptures, and I realize you're coming at this from a Christian perspective, which is fine. But scientifically, if what you suggest occurred, occurred, mm -hmm. how would anybody live? I think, again, it would depend on your location upon the planet in relationship to the spin of the, um, of the polar shift itself. In other words, if you were in an area where you are sort of in the pivot area, probably not a whole lot would happen to you. But those on the outside of the shift, oh. you see, would, would have tremendous damage. Oh, I absolutely do see. In other words, inside you would hardly feel the motion. Outside you'd be thrown from here to Kalamazoo. Yes. So there you have it, folks. It's time to see the real evidence of what is truly happening in our world. The next couple of years could very well be the beginning of the Great Tribulation that so many scholars and theologians have spoken of. Take this time to ponder and study what has been presented to you in this video. And as always, you are encouraged to view...